Welcome to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach, the business connector to business in Brazil. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection, the world's first English language internet radio program about business in Brazil and the world since 2009 and now in podcast format. I'm Tom Riach, an American living in Brazil for many years and known as the king of networking and talking from my podcast studio in Campinas, São Paulo, Brazil. Today's guest is Elisângela Almeida, and she's talking with us from Vitória, in the state of Espírito Santo, Brazil. And we're going to talk about climbing the career ladder. Elisângela Almeida is a CFO certified by IBEF, which is the Brazilian Institute for Financial Executives, post-graduated in finance and controllership, an alumni of the Advanced Board Member of Women course and the ESMT Berlin International Module, studied project management at CNAM in Paris, and Elisangela has held leadership positions in finance, IT, and change management, lived for five years as an expat in France and Malaysia, and in Latin America, IT and finance teams based in Brazil and Argentina. She volunteered for the United Nations Women Empower Women Project in New York City, and currently is a volunteer in the Women of Brazil group on Entrepreneurship Committee as a mentor, Voices Committee as a lecturer for university students, and in the Racial Equality Committee as a mentor. In 2016, Elisangela Almeida climbed the Kilimanjaro Mountain, the highest mountain in Africa, and the highest single freestanding mountain in the world. That's 5,895 meters above sea level. You literally take someone's breath away, Elisangela. So hello and welcome to Talk to Brazil. Hello, Tom. Are you up on a mountain now? <laughs> no. So I, 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 today I'm in sea level. I'm in Vitoria. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss a lot my mountains. But there are mountains in Vitoria and in Espírito Santo, right? Yes, we have. We have one. Uh, here in Vitoria, near for my place, my parents' place, I have a Mestre Álvaro. Mm -hmm. That's one that I really love since my uh, childhood. So I think that the beginning start here in Vitoria. But, uh, because tell, I start... Uh, well, tell, I'd like you to tell our audience, why Kilimanjaro? Why that mountain? Where did that start? Yeah, so everything starts in my childhood. So why mountains? Because I always loved this. So uh, in the, uh, when I was in college, I started to practice a kind of rally, trekking rally. Mm -hmm. Trekking rally is a kind of sport that you have. You need to work in a team. We have one person that takes care about time, another one about distance other that take care about uh, the directions. Mm -hmm. So with this, I start to work better in team. So it's a kind of competition that we work in team. Also, you can travel to uh, for other place. Mm -hmm. You can uh, walk in near from sea, in mountains. So everything starts there. So when you ask me, about Kilimanjaro. Why Kilimanjaro? So it starts in my childhood mm -hmm. as well. So when I was a kid, I read a book that talked about a little girl in Africa mm -hmm. that she always talked with a tree. This tree, it's called a Baobab. Uh -huh. So in this book, say that so... Baobab, it's a big tree that we need to have 10 ch uh, child, uh, children to just uh, have a hug in this tree. Mm. So I was just imagining how amazing could be this tree <laughs> and imagine where I can find this tree. So uh, a lot of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I was just 40, 
So for celebrate my birthday, I just was wondering what I can do to celebrate my my birthday. So I just remember about this history. Mm -hmm. So and uh, at that moment, I knew more about uh, mountains. So I just discovered that we have a list of seven uh, mountains, the highest mountains in each continent. Okay. So in the beginning, I was thinking about uh, Everest. So uh, oh, a lot you, of, start, uh, you started mountains. big, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a uh, lot of uh, mountain guys they think about Everest. But Everest, uh, so I just, I think that to go to the mountain, you need to have a history with this. It's mm -hmm. so, okay, Everest is a big, biggest one. Mm -hmm. But I thought that's so, so expensive, it, there are no big meaning for me. I see. Yeah. So I, I was prepared, prepared because I, I think... Five years ago, I just joined to CAP. It's a club in Brazil. It's mm -hmm. a club that prepared people for mountains. You can uh, learn about uh, escalades, uh, a lot of techniques, okay. uh, technical, mm -hmm. about uh, mountains. So I decided, just remember about my childhood, mm -hmm. I decided by uh, Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm because this book right. and it was a chance just to see a Baoba as well. Mm, good. <laughs> good choice. I good think so. Choice. I think so. Well, I, don't, I don't say I think so because I don't climb mountains, but I guess it makes sense. So you could imagine when I arrived in Tanzania, it's an amazing place because one week before we did a safari. In, a, in this safari, I could see uh, a lot of animals, Serengeti. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very amazing. It's like to be in the National Geographic. Right. <laughs> and uh, King Lion as well. <laughs> so it's a very good experience. And about to go to the mountain. Uh, it always, for me, when I was doing the, my course of uh, mountaineering, uh, we have a lesson about philosophy of mountains. Mm. In this lesson, my teacher asked us, why go to the mountain? We just start to think about. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, so, uh, last century, uh, countries like... Uh, uh, France, uh, Italy, the people would like to go to the mountain because it was a kind of nationality. So, right. so oh, people of France, the first one to go to Mont Blanc. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the guy from England, the first one to go to Everest. You know, that's a kind of competition. Right. But now, how big is the uh, mountain? They, they reach a red. There are no competition about it. Why do it? Because it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. expensive. So I just answered to him, to let people. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> people can met here. But this is another kind of uh, meeting uh, and um, people as well. Because of people that... Um, uh, would like to have a connection with uh, the nature, mm -hmm. have a connection with the mountain. So always mountains has a kind of uh, um, sense of religion as well. Uh, to go to the mountain, n nobody come back the same way. Right. There are kind of transformation. In my case, it's, it's the same. I had a transformation. So, uh, as I told, uh, my first week it was a safari, then the second week uh, going to Kilimanjaro. So, I was prepared, but when I started, I have seen that my group, people, it, 
they were more prepared than me because some people do marathon or mm-hmm. uh, other, uh, other kind of sports. Okay. Well, so, well first of all, yeah. you have to you have to prepare to go up the mountain. It's just not deciding to go and yes. go. There's there's all of the preparation. Yes, but I just discovered that sometimes there are people they are so well prepared they do marathon, participate of marathon or other things, but they just uh, could not reach the there. This is stranger mm-hmm. because it's not a, a kind. Um, a decision of uh, I'm more health, more prepared. There are people that you think, no, this guy is very well prepared. Right. But why not? We just discover that mountain choose the people that they want. Really? Aha. Uh-huh. So when it starts, well, it be for some five days to reach uh, the vulcan, mm-hmm. and the last day or the last night is to reach uh, there. So, as I was the person, just the, the, I can say, uh, no more stronger person of the group. Mm-hmm. They decided that I should be the, the, the be the first one of the queue. So, okay. One hour, okay, two hours, three hours. So after I think six hour walking, I was very, very tired. And mm-hmm. more, I was freezing. Mm. When it starts to, to, to have this, the, uh, we just, just like um, feel so tired and we'd like to sleep. Right. You cannot do it. You need to eat something, something very energetic to. Just uh, wake up. Mm. So I just uh, had a feeling that I was uh, disturbing my, I was uh, not participating well. And the people of my team, they were later because me. I didn't feel comfortable with this. And I start to say, "Go away, go away, you! I, uh, I can go after you. Don't mm. need to wait for me because I was not comfortable in right. this position of vulnerability, mm-hmm. you know. So, but people, no, no, no. We are team. We are team. We stay together. So, after um, I think I'm half hour, I say, "No, go, go. You can go first." So I stay, stay away. I stay with a guide. Mm-hmm. So, but it was so difficult for me. This guide sometimes I just fall down. He will make me up. Okay, good. So the finally, uh, when you have uh, see the eyes, the everything. So it was amazing. And when you reach the, who is the, I forgot the name of the Kumi in English. Peak. The peak, yes. Right. When I reached the peak, I was just uh, 50 meters from the peak. Mm-hmm. I have seen the five guys just wait me. They didn't reach the peak without me. They they, they just will wait for me. They waited for you. Just, uh, okay. Yes, it was amazing. <laughs> they wait for me. So if the girl come to me and say, Elise, if you're not came here, it will not be the same for us. Wow, that's strong. I'm so happy that you are here. So with the five, uh, the six guys, we have six just reached the, uh, the peak together. It was amazing. And you all uh, made it together uh, then. Wow, that's teamwork. Yes. Huh? That's why we, we go to the mountain, because this kind of people that we met there, well, I could see what you said. You said that the mountain transformed you, uh, yeah. but it transforms people into a team. Yes, you're right. This, I, had, I had another lesson as well. Because mm. when I just uh, walked down, mm-hmm. I was not happy. <laughs> really, I was not happy. Uh. One, one guy just said to me, Elise, are you okay? I didn't answer. He said, Elise, how do you feel? I say, bad. Uh, this? He said, oh, oh, okay. So, um, 
always I uh, met people that say that uh, they didn't feel they feel bad here in Kilimanjaro, but no bar hit the peak. Mm. You reach the peak. Right. You a Simba Mama, Elise. You a Simba Mama. So, oh my God. <laughs> you know this lesson. The biggest one of Kilimanjaro. Because I was not happy. Because uh, the guide, the guide, he helped me. Sometimes I just found out. Mm -hmm. He, he made me up. <laughs> and uh, in the beginning, I was thinking that... Uh, Go to the peak, it was something individual. It was um, like a competition. Right. You, but you, <laughs> yourself, yourself. But what uh, uh, the takeaway of this, uh, nobody's alone. When you reach a peak, there are lots of people in your career right. and your team that help you. Nobody's reached the peak alone. Right. Well, what you we said, uh, one of the things you said, you said that the the mountain chooses uh, who it wants, right? Uh, yes. And I think uh, sometimes that true that's true for companies and careers. Uh, more and more so, yes. companies are, are, are choosing people uh, in a different way. They're not just choosing people that can get to the top or, or can uh, technically know what they're doing. I think what you just said, and you're talking about teamwork. Teamwork is ever so more important today uh, because in the world that we live in, the teams can be everywhere. You're not necessarily together physically anymore. Yes. So uh, you say something interesting because uh, companies choose people. What choose the, uh, how companies mm -hmm. choose people? Um, using the um, culture, right. the company culture chooses the people. Now, for you, I, I, I see you're, you're speaking. You're a speaker now, and you're speaking to young women and young persons in schools, right, in the university. Yes. What do you say to them? What do you say to them to prepare themselves uh, for today's business world, for today's world, with or without business? Yeah. I can use this first lesson, not be alone. You can uh, be supported by, by other people, by mente uh, mentors, by coaches, your family, your friends. All these people uh, uh, could support you in this because it's not easy to understand the culture of companies, not easy to understand sometimes the ecosystem of business mm -hmm. but you need to have supporters it's very important and other thing that i think it's very important it's to be prepared mm -hmm. to be prepared how can be prepared for business study and uh, have a, a see above above the mountain, eh? right. because sometimes you don't have an uh, opportunity now, mm -hmm. but in the future, the opportunity could be appears for you. You need to be prepared. My first experience in expat, in going to France, I was prepared three years before. Uh, three years before, there, uh, there were no opportunities to be expat because in company, they always choose someone from engineering to go to France because uh, always in oil and gas, we need to exchange uh, technical knowledge, mm -hmm. but not in, in finance. So, but in the same way, I start to learn uh, French. Why not? Right. I'm working in a French company. Why not learn French? Right. If I have opportunity to choose this, okay. So that moment, no view, no clue that uh, I could uh, move to France. But I was preparing myself. Always I did MBA. Uh, I chose someone, something that 
have a um, international because right. in my uh, idea always I I have a target. Right. I would like to have an international uh, career. Right. So everything that I choose, it was to get this target. Sometimes it's not uh, visible, but I choose to be prepared. If I have opportunity, I was prepared. That's uh, what I did. I think that's so important. You, you reminded me of a story years ago when uh, I worked in a company and I, I had a group of persons and we were, the area which I was in was international commerce and sales. And one of the persons came up to me and in the conversation with uh, with person, she says, no, uh, I'd like to be in the international side. I'd like to travel. I'd like to go abroad. And so I asked her, I said, well, do you have a passport? And she said, no. And, and that was a question I put to her. I said, well, if, if you want to travel internationally, the first thing you need to have is a passport. Yeah. And so in being prepared, that's what I told her. I says, what I, my suggestion to you, and, and her question was, what, what do I need to do? I said, well, first get your passport and always be ready because opportunities can come up uh, that you're not aware of today, uh, but you need to be ready. And uh, so she did that. She had her, she got her passport. Opportunities did arise and she was literally in the right place at the right time and able to to travel because she was ready. And that's what you did. You started learning a language to be ready for something that could happen. You weren't sure that it would happen, uh, but it did happen. And and that's part of being prepared. It's not waiting for somebody to call you and say, well, you'll go to France if you speak French, right? Uh, Uh It doesn't work that way. And I think part right. of what you said about having your dream and reading your book as a small girl, uh, I think that goes for everybody, for young persons today. Uh, they have to have a dream. They have to have that book. They have to think about what the future can be. And that future uh, for the young persons today in Brazil, throughout the world, the future is the world. It's not a locality. It's not the backyard because business is everywhere and opportunities are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, we need to, to see this. But I understand sometimes uh, part of this the, uh, young people. Sometimes it's not easy to dream. Uh, that's why we need supporters. Because I never dream alone. I, ha- I just met uh, teachers that dream with me. That say to me it's okay. I always I uh, study in public schools, but my teacher say, Lisanja, you need more. You deserve more. You need to to improve every, every time. Mm-hmm. I, I have example um, in public schools in Brazil. Well, longer years ago <laughs> when I was studying. Um, we need only 20 point, points uh, uh, to, to be gra- graduate. Mm-hmm. So in second quarter, I have met, uh, reached this mm. in history okay. because I have 10 and more 10. So I, I could graduate. So uh, when I, I was in third quarter, I just in um, test, I get, I got, uh, I got seven. Mm-hmm. So what my teacher did, did so Elisangela, you have not good uh, grade. So we need to show this uh, for your parents. And I would like to have the signature of your dad and your mother. Wow. I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> But it's not a bad grade. I just seven. Uh-huh. For you, yes, Elisabeth. I I want to uh, the signature of your father and mother. Mm-hmm. So I say, but I have around twenty points. No way. What do you do? Uh huh. Did you did you do you do you work? I say no. Okay, your job is study. 
<laughs> so when, when I, I show my my test for my pets, my teacher asked you to 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 sign this, but it's not a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Because my teacher cares care about me. Uh, she really wanted you to, to to know what you're doing, not just to show by a number yeah. that somebody thinks you know what you're doing. Yeah, this is make made difference in my life to have teachers like this in a public school. You can meet good to, uh, teachers in public schools. Well, even schools. In, in school and out of school, what you mentioned, uh, we are tested. And many times, uh, and for young persons in school, we, what I say, we're, we can be tested, we can, we're seen, and we actually live, all of us, on a stage. And when we start in a company as maybe as a trainee or at the beginning, uh, the recommendation is that people are looking at you. They're, they're watching you. They're seeing what you're doing. So you do need mm-hmm. to show results. It's not just being there uh, that yeah. is success. Uh, success it just starts mm-hmm. at the end. We're talking about the ladder, how you climb the ladder. The ladder's at the very yeah. bottom, and there's everything, a lot of things to do to get up. Yeah. The important is not great is keep learning. Well, I think that's important. I think the the mountain showed you that, uh, that to go up, first there's a selection. Uh, you need to be prepared, uh, but you also need uh, well, the physical preparation, right? Because you can only see yeah. what the challenge is as you go up. Yeah, it's right. It's right. So it's a, it's a, it's a perfect uh, we, we compare Montanari, mountains, and uh, Korea. It's it's the same preparation, physical preparation or, or technical preparation, uh, leadership and leadership as well in career, mm-hmm. uh, team, uh, uh, working teams, uh, in mountains, it trust in the team. It's very important. <laughs> you have to see a lot of films <laughs> that, uh, we can, uh, because in film sometimes to have a little bit of a, 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 a drama, mm-hmm. they always put the, the bad guy and the good guy in mountain <laughs> as well. <laughs> no, but I, I, but, I, but the example that you gave us, which not is a real example, uh, mm-hmm. really shows that the two things. As you were going up the mountain, it doesn't get easier. It becomes more challenging. The second yeah. thing is that as you went up with the team, and I think it is striking that the team waited for you uh, be- yeah. because success doesn't come from just one person in a company or in a group uh, reaching whatever that goal is. Uh, today, success has to be shared. And yeah. I think it, it means more. You, see, you can see how much it meant uh, I know it meant a lot to you, but I'm sure it even meant more to the persons waiting for you. That you, yeah. that you were all able to get there together. Yeah. Yeah, this thing you say about sharing, sharing. Right. That's the same reason that I'm today, I'm a volunteer in, in projects for uh, empowering women. Mm hmm. Because if I have opportunity to study, to have a career, to travel the world, so I would like to every woman uh, have this opportunity. Also, black women, because I'm black, I know how it's difficult for black women. So I would like to share in this, to share in this knowledge, to share this vision and help other women to dream the world today needs people like you because the world needs models uh, and models that could be, and you are one that should be followed. Uh, and as you are an example and as you are doing, uh, continuing to show yourself as an example to young people, that's highly commendable. Yeah. So it's, I think this is intentional. I don't know what it's, I think it's, uh, it's hard to say to, to follow me, uh, the whole, be a holy model, 
But I, I just, uh, I would like to be simple. If a young girl say, so if she, she got, it's possible for me. Just think that's possible. Well, I think too, you, you're showing a side. You also learn from the people you're, you're talking to. Because young people today, and that's throughout the world, are different from you when you were young, reading your book, thinking about a mountain. Yeah, yeah, you're very you're right. You're right. You to see that the side is, is very good. You have you need to have a yes, holy models. You need to have a um, to feel represented. Mm -hmm. I think this name is represent. Someone see me and feel represented about this. That I think this is the difference. Um, that that's the reason that's important to say about the uh, young uh, girls that okay you can go to the mountain if you want you can have a international career if you want you can be head in financing a startup mm -hmm. if you want yeah but you should be prepared be prepared i think two words prepared i agree with you but another word that you said that I think is as important, of curiosity. Uh, yeah. you, you mentioned that before we started. You said you were curious. And, and curiosity, I think, serves everybody. Uh, if you are curious, and that's something that uh, is not bad, I think it's good. And if you can get that curiosity, couple it with the preparedness, couple it with the preparedness uh, then uh, things could become better. Yeah, you're right. So curiosity is good because it's fun as well. <laughs> I love to discover things. Well, <laughs> I, I can say <laughs> that because we're, we're unfortunately we're coming to the, the end of our time. But what I was curious about when I saw your profile, uh, really what attracted me was the fact that you climbed a mountain. Uh, I, <laughs> I look at a lot of profiles every day. Uh, but mm -hmm. really I says, wow, she climbed Kilimanjaro. And then I says, uh, I got to put her on the podcast because I want to know why. Because that's something really different. And I think what you showed, and I give that a suggestion to everybody, sometimes we do things and we don't think it's important. Uh, but I'm sure as uh, I, I see today and our listeners know, the most important thing in your life was that and still is. Yeah, yeah. It, so it, it, this this is not uh, about uh, to win something, to win the mountain. Mountain. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins the mountain. It's it's not a competition with the mountain. No. It's a competition inside us. Right. Uh, inside us, because our fears, uh, fear to be um, uh, weak. Uh, not be succeed, succeed, uh, well succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe to depend of other people, right? Or maybe not come back to home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but you, you say okay. It's uh, <laughs> it's okay. I, I will try. I will try. That, that that that's the point. That's the point. You try when doing. It, if action, you come back, right? you learn a lot. You'll not be the same. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. That's a great story, Elisange. I want to thank you. As I said, we're coming to the end of our time. I want to thank you for sharing uh, your time, your experience, and this story with us, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, Tom. Now, for us, it's a great opportunity. And I want to also thank our audience and thank them for their time and listening to us. You can also find more about Elisangela Almeida uh, on LinkedIn. Her profile will, will take you to where she's been. Uh, besides English and French, she speaks, obviously, Portuguese and Spanish. Uh, and you can see some of the things that she's done in her life and her professional career. So again, I'd like to thank our audience and our sponsor, Focus MI Market Intelligence. Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agricultural market. And more about them on their site, which is focusmi.com. 
visit our site, TalkToBrazil.com, and find our previous shows of Talk to Brazil, which are also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. So remember, when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Goodbye, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil. 